Good morning. Um, my name is Sri Vidya Ayer and I am the co-founder and CEO of Kaneet Tech. We have been working on um, using network data for machine learning um, for quite a few years now. And uh, I'm going to talk about um, three things in this talk. Um, how can data analytics and machine learning help your network operations? How can you iteratively implement analytics within your organization? And how do you integrate with your current infrastructure and supporting systems? What processes, cost, and skills? This picture provides you an overview of the evolution from the current network monitoring to a fully AI-based automated autonomous decision-making uh, network operations. So let's start with the network monitoring, the current state of the network monitoring, which most of you probably already know. Uh, it provides you network metrics. It provides you events based on rules and static thresholds. Um, it's manual, it's reactive, um, and you have to do manual correlation. So you basically have your eye on the glass all the time. The data analytics um, goes one step further, and it provides a way to aggregate multiple data types. Um, so you can see patterns in data over a period of time. And this helps you with getting a more accurate uh, network baseline. And you can also derive rules and thresholds. You don't have to guess what kind of threshold you want to put. You can see what the data is telling you, and then you can um, generate thresholds based on that. The machine learning goes one step further, and it actually learns from these patterns in data. So what's the difference? The difference is in the data analytics, it provides you the patterns, and you as a network engineer has to get the inference from the data. In machine learning, um, it actually learns from the data, it not only learns from the patterns you think it's learning, it also finds hidden um, relationships be between the data, which is the nice thing about it. And since it's um, learning from the data, it can actually predict what might happen uh, based on the past behavior. This is similar to how um, Amazon uh, does their uh, product recommendations. They look at what you have bought, and they try to predict what you might be buying in the future. I wanted to put AI in here uh, because uh, there's a lot of marketing jargon uh, going around with the AI, but I have to say we are nowhere near uh, any autonomous AI type um, systems to do um, network operations. Network data is extremely complex. Um, so I don't know when we would see a fully autonomous um, system, um, maybe, you know, 10 years down the line. So in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about how you go about implementing a data analytics and a machine learning um, into your network operations. So this is my uh, checklist. Um, for uh, implementing the analytics and machine learning. And we'll talk about each of these uh, boxes in detail in the next few slides. Um, the first one is clearly defined use cases. And I cannot stress this enough, is before you do anything, define your problem and define your problem well. Um, saying, I want to understand how my network is behaving is too vague. Um, you want to segment your network um, because networks, as you all already know, is inherently complex. So trying to do too many things is definitely going to lead to failure. So segment your network, segment your problem domain, and uh, try to start small. And I've given some examples of how to um, segment your problem domain, and this is not exhaustive. But these are some of the common ways you can actually break it. So um, one of the more common ways to do it is to do by application protocol. So let's say you want to just monitor, monitor your uh, DNS infrastructure. Um, so you can just say, let me monitor um, all my DNS servers. If you think that's too much, um, depending on the size of your company, 
you can even segment and say, I only want to monitor um, like three DNS servers, or I only want to monitor uh, a particular aspect of the DNS server to see how it is resolving the queries or how long it is taking to resolve the queries. I mean, you can segment it as small as possible. Um, some of the other things um, that you can do is to monitor TCP connections, geographic region, um, you can, you know, think about many other ways of um, segmenting your problem domain. But please um, segment it because otherwise um, you're going to be um, facing failures in, in figuring out what it is actually telling you. The next step of the checklist is collecting the right data. Network data is inherently noisy. Uh, what does that mean? It means that most of the time, what you see in the network data is pretty boring. There's nothing interesting happening. And then suddenly there is you know, some uh, abnormality. But the abnormality is spread out and it's sort of imbalanced. So you really have to kind of figure out how to collect the right data and how to pre-process the right data so you get the right set of normal and abnormal um, data so you can analyze it properly. Um, so you can uh, collect, figure, uh, you know, figure out how you want to collect data and where you want to collect data. So you can collect data from a host or a server um, or a router. Um, you can do active measurement data, ping or trace route, though I have to say we haven't actually um, tested with collecting uh, the active measurement data. We primarily do passive. Uh, the passive data includes flow data, packet captures, and uh, logs. Um, you can collect routing information, topology, and device configurations. And all this depends on what you're trying to do. Remember, um, what problem you have defined uh, dictates what type of data you collect. And I want to add one other thing here is when you are trying to do analysis and you probably need multiple types of data to do the analysis, start with one type of data and then add on incrementally. One example that uh, we came across is uh, somebody trying to analyze their DNS server issues. And uh, so it's good to start with the DNS server log for a month and see what it's saying. And then if you want additional context, then you can um, add, say, packet capture to it. And that will give you additional context and additional insights. So the more data types you add, and uh, it gives you better insights. But you can start with one type of data um, to get some insight and then add on as you need um, going forward. The third thing that on the checklist was storing and processing the data. This is a fairly complex topic and there are plenty of books written on how to store and process the big data and uh, deal with all their volume and um, everything. There's just too many options. But from a network perspective, a network data perspective, I want to um, suggest some general criteria is first thing you want to think about is whether you want to have an in-house or cloud storage uh, processing solution. Um, you could do just commodity servers, set up everything yourself, or you can go with like a cloud, uh, public cloud provider like Amazon um, to do your storage and processing. The second thing is if you wanted to stream or batch processing or probably both, but I would recommend starting with the batch processing of data uh, because stream processing has its own quirks um, and you don't want to deal with it right off the bat. Um, the third thing is do you want detailed search and indexing? Um, the Elastic um, database, the Elk stack is Elastic Log Stash Kibana uh, and the Splunk, they all uh, ingest massive amounts of data and you can search through the data um, in various uh, permutations and combinations. Um, again, it comes with overhead. 
persistent data storage? Do you want to save all this data? Do you want to save the um, process data, raw data? You can use Postgres or MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. Um, Postgres um, does a lot of things. Actually, I was quite surprised at um, all the things you can do with Postgres. So maybe that's a good way to start. And if you don't want to deal with databases, you can just start with um, just simple data storage and um, file-based data storage and use CSV and JSON files. You would be surprised how much uh, insight you can get from just um, analyzing some CSV or JSON files with Bash or Python scripts. Uh, but one caveat here is it is not scalable. If you really want to um, make this into a network monitoring operations uh, process, uh, this um, you know breaks uh, pretty quickly. Um, so then you want to think about some of the other things that um, I talked about. So the next thing we want to think about is the um, machine learning framework um, and approach and the algorithms. Um, that's the fourth on the checklist. And you want to think about uh, what kind of machine learning framework you want to use. Uh, there's also a lot more. I mean, I'm sort of condensing a lot of information in this one slide. Um, how you build your machine learning pipeline um, is much more complicated than this, um, but given our time constraint, uh, I don't want to uh, talk too much about it. Um, so you first have to figure out what framework you want to use. Do you want to build it yourself using Python? Scikit-learn has very good documentation and it's easy to learn if you know some basic Python. Keras and TensorFlow are deep learning frameworks, and I haven't yet come across anything that needs a deep learning approach. Um, it's also a black box, so especially with the network data, it uh, it makes me nervous to use a deep learning algorithm. So uh, your best bet is Python scikit-learn. Um, you can also use cloud provider tools. Um, I think all of them have, I just mentioned Google, um, Sorto ML here, but um, Amazon, Azure, IBM, they all have their own sort of machine learning framework. Again, um, you have to pick what you want to do and whether it actually fits um, what you're trying to do. Um, nothing fits out of the box, so there's still some tweaking you have to do. Um, the second thing you want to think about is the machine learning approach. And um, this depends on your use cases. And there are typically just two main approaches. I know there is reinforcement learning and things that people talk about. But for what we need to do, I think supervised learning and unsupervised learning is plenty. And you want to pick which type of um, approach you want to take. And sometimes you may have to do both, depending on the problem you're trying to solve. Um, and the third thing is the algorithms. And the algorithms are selected based on what approach you're taking. There are some supervised learning algorithms and some unsupervised um, learning algorithms. And uh, there are some general guidelines, but Honestly, this is pretty much a trial and error. Um, and uh, maybe in the future, they'll have a better idea of which algorithm really works with which set of problems. But um, in some sense right now, it is trial and error. So in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about how you want to integrate. Uh, now that you have a data analytics, you have uh, figured out how to implement data analytics, you've been using some machine learning, all that is great, but how do you integrate it with the current operations? So what do you need to consider? First, you need to consider how your current data collection infrastructure um, and policies are. What types of data you're collecting? Um, what are the policies that surround your data collection? Um, there are places that I've seen where they have to keep data for 30 days. There are some places where they only keep data for one week. Um, so do you have something that will give you a data over a period of time? Do you have a time series database that you can tap into that you can look at uh, for a month's worth of data? 
So the other thing you want to think about is, is the data collected and stored in a form that can be used for analytics. Um, so when we talk to people, they say, oh yeah, we have this whole time series database. Um, what can you do with it? Um, so you want to generate the data from the time series database in a form that can actually be analyzed because a lot of the data collection um, is uh, either binary data or they have so many different formats and they all have to be standardized into some kind of uh, format that the data collection uh, tools can, the data analytics tools can use. So you want to make sure um, the data is in the right format. And once you do these two, you will get a pretty good idea of what additional data infrastructure um, you need. The next thing, which is pretty important for this to succeed, is you want to review your current network monitoring process and see how you can use the results from the analytics within your operations. It's great that you implemented data analytics. It's great that you implemented machine learning. But if you cannot use those results within your existing network monitoring not processes, it's pretty useless. Um, because then it becomes these siloed things that the monitoring people are doing what they're doing, the analytics people are doing what they're doing, and then not really talking to each other. So before you um, sort of set up any kind of analytics, um, review your current processes. The additional cost of implementation comes from deciding whether you want to buy or build open source versus commercial, whether you want to go open source yourself or open source with support. And it will definitely come with additional staffing needs. But down the line, um, since you are automating some of these things, um, some of the time that you spend just doing churn work and you know fighting fires is going to reduce. So um, you have to um, see what additional staffing needs you would need for this. So this is one of the common questions I get is, what do I need to know to uh, implement data analytics and machine learning? Um, so these are the few things that you absolutely need to know. Um, and I, as I have been stressing in the previous slides, you need to understand data sources, types, and formats. And you need to understand data collection tools. Because even if you understand how the data sources are, what data sources are, and what types of data is there, um, you still need to know how to collect them and how to configure these uh, collection tools. It could be open source. It could be commercial or a combination. Um, you definitely have to have a working knowledge of TCP IP protocol stack. Because let's say you're trying to understand your DNS um, infrastructure, you need to know what types of faults you can have in DNS. Um, what are you really looking for? Um, it, you know, it really helps to define your problem statement. Knowledge of Bash Python scripting, you don't actually need to be a full-fledged programmer. And I think this is one of the sort of contentious issues. Uh, because the network engineers I talk to say, I don't want to be a programmer. Uh, you don't really need to be a programmer. You just need to know how to do scripting. Um, and it's, you know, scripting is much more forgiving than having to be a, an application development, um, you know, a, application developer. So, um, but it's useful to have some knowledge of scripting. So it helps in automation. Uh, a basic understanding of machine learning algorithms. Um, again, and I say basic, because you just need to know what these algorithms do and how to call the methods, say, in scikit-learn. You don't need to know the inner workings of how they work and how they're optimized and all that. And to that, I like this quote from the Google developer site. And it says, do machine learning like the great engineer you are, not like the great machine learn learning expert you are. Because believe me, none of us are going to be machine learning experts anytime soon, but hopefully we're all good engineers and we can define our problem and use this machine learning to get what we need. 
And these are some of the things that I call intangibles. And other than the trusting machine learning, the other two are not necessarily specific to data analytics. Um, but so let's talk about the first um, one, the trusting machine learning. It's not autonomous, like I mentioned before. So you have to give it the right data and instructions. It's not that smart to figure out what you're thinking. It doesn't know what you're thinking. And this is why uh, even like an email spam filter or any of the recommendations engines, they ask you, oh, did we get it right? And what they're doing is they're uh, trying to feed the data back into the machine learning algorithm so it can learn and become more intelligent. Um, and you have to do the same thing. And initially, you have to verify the predictions um, are actually some reasonably correct, um, or it's giving you something completely like you know nonsense. Um, there are some efforts um, to standardize trust in AI ML. Um, NIST is working on it, and I attended um, a kickoff session a couple of months back. But we couldn't even agree on what trust in AI means. Um, so I think we're a long way from figuring out how to standardize um, trust. So you kind of have to do your own trust and verify a loop here to make sure you, you feel comfortable with it. So the other two, like I said, um, this is a question I always get, but this isn't anything specific to this. Um, the job security, you're not. Um, becoming irrelevant. You still need domain knowledge to run this, as we saw earlier. Um, you're basically automating your own expertise. And what it provides you is that it provides you more time to strategize and not just constantly fix the same problem. And one of the things I always get um, complaints from network engineers is that they keep you know, fighting fires all the time that they don't get time to actually go back and design the network and do it properly. So this helps you with um, doing that over a period of time. And I don't want to dwell too much on the management and staff buy-in, but um, you definitely have to have management buy-in and you definitely have to allocate time for implementing this and training people if they don't have you can't just say oh you know go figure it out while you're doing um, 100 other things so uh, i think it's important for management to figure out that they need to provide um, time and training for the staff so to wrap up um define your problem clearly i cannot stress this enough and start small and build on your success. This is not a magic bullet, contrary to what the hype says that machine learning and data analytics and big data can do this, that, and everything else. It is not a magic bullet, but it does have proven benefits. It, we have um, tested the benefits it provides, but you have to define your problem and you have to start small and build on your success. Um, and to wrap it, uh, this is my contact information. You can either contact me on email or Twitter uh, if you want to talk about more on some of these things. Hopefully, um, I might be publishing some articles or something in the future, but let's see. Um, and then I'll um, hand it off to questions now.